Hamid was the guru behind their marketing plan and their product plan. And what she argues is this is they call the product pricing curve, which you went to business school, you know, the product pricing curve. It's basically just a curve. And on this axis, it's your customers. So your, we call the patients your customers. From the lowest value, if you'll excuse the phrase, to the highest value of customers. On the bottom of the curve are your products. Well, it's numbers of customers, right? That's what that is. Yeah, I would say, I hate to say quality of customers, but people who won't pay anything. Oh, oh, the top quality of, the of customers. People okay. or companies or nonprofits that will pay a lot of money mm -hmm. for whatever it is you have, right? So you want to work your way up the product price curve on the customer side, and then on the product side, you want to increasingly offer your customers higher and higher value services so that you can generate from the fewer customers even more money. And basically work your way up the product price curve. Right, you want to get better products, higher value products, you can attract higher value customers. But most musicians, excuse me, filmmakers, what? bloggers, authors, they're stuck in the lower left corner of the curve. Why is that, right? They're only selling a product, one product for say a $20 CD or a $20 DVD or a $35 book, and they're stuck in this lower left hand corner of the product pricing curve, right? So, the zero dollar item is actually the thing. The very zero dollar item is your social discovery tool. It could be an MP3 file that you put up on iTunes for free or on MySpace for free or your blog. It could be a video trailer that you put up on YouTube. Why are we giving away something for free? We're trying to attract a really, really wide audience. And we're increasingly trying to get them to become true fans, right? So these social discovery tools are critical, and especially the social networks and social media, because other people can also popularize your free, right, whatever that is. You want to continue to build out networks and encourage them to drive them to see whatever it is you have. So these social discovery tools, number one, it should be completely digital. Right? In other words, that's not a social discovery tool because it costs me money to publish, to print, to postage, shipping and handling envelopes, something to put them in the envelopes, tape, walk into the post office. That's not a zero dollar item social discovery tool. It should be an MP3 file. It could be a video trailer. It could be a digital easing or a white paper for an activist. It could be a document that's created that you're trying to get attention on. That's a zero dollar item, right? So that social discovery tool, what you find then is most authors and filmmakers are just inching up the curve. They basically got the twenty dollars to your DVD or book. And so if all you ever have is a twenty dollar item, all you'll ever attract is twenty dollar book buyers, right? So how do we march our way up the curve? What are the things that we should be doing to, to create increasingly higher value products? For musicians, like you said, your musicians kind of get this model because the successful ones are doing it. In other words, what they say is that increasingly, if you can get um, more and more a closer relationship with the artist, the more money you can make. It's, it's inevitable and it works in almost every field. The closer you get to the artist, the more you'll pay. Musicians know that you pay $20 to go see them in concert, but you'll pay $50 to see them in the front row, right? God knows what they pay to get backstage passes and, you know, um, house parties as well. You know, you make more money from house parties and uh, playing it you know, weddings and, and different events. And then, of course, there are all the licensing opportunities. Licensing meaning not just merchandise, like t-shirts with the band's name and logo or the album cover and hats and other things, but also licensing the music itself. Licensing to cell phones and to ringtones and to advertisements and film trailers and TV shows and podcasts. There's so many ways to license music these days. And that generates more revenue than just the $20 CD, right? So we're trying to increasingly move you up this product price curve so that you create increasingly people who pay more and more money. And the interesting thing is, as you move up the curve, you generally have fewer and fewer customers paying more money, but you may make more money from fewer customers.